Anne Boleyn, Jane Grey, Catherine Howard. Oh, those bits there. And that's the crypt in there where all the 1700 skeletons are buried in lead chests.
This tomb was made for a man who was a constable of the tower. He planned this tomb for himself and his wife, but they were never buried in it. It's empty. Very ornate, empty tomb. Sir Richard, generally a tenant of the tower from 1513 to 1520. Sir Richard oversaw the building of this chapel for Henry VIII. Sometime between 1649 and 1660, the chaplain John Shippett hid the chapel's medieval font within this empty tomb. The ship set probably wanted to keep the font safe during the English Civil War. The font was rediscovered in 1876 when the tomb was moved into the centre of the chapel. Conservators have restored the font, which dates from 1350 to 1490. It is now regularly used at services and can be seen in the entrance to the chapel. And I know about that font, it's still one of the oldest working fonts in London. That's a replication of the Imperial State Crown with the Cullen on Diamond in it. The ceiling is Spanish. I think they said it was and it's known to repel spiders so they never get spider webs in here so I have a Spanish elm or Spanish cedar or something like that oh look that's lovely St Edward's Crown, that's the one, not the Imperial State Crown, St Edward's Crown. That'd be that. How I got away with that, I don't know because you're not normally allowed to take photographs. Unless they've lifted it for this flower festival thing, possibly. Down here is um, where the Yeoman Warders live or Beef Eaters live. Anyway, back to the chapel. I'll keep that as a separate piece. The chapel was built in the reign of Henry VIII. Every night the curfew bell is rung and um, every night you also have a ceremony called the Ceremony of the Keys. This ceremony has been performed since medieval times and has only been interrupted once and that was in the Second World War when a bomb hit. Um, the ceremony carried on some minutes late and the soldiers or yeomen that were involved in it wrote to the king 
and apologised, offering their resignation because they'd interrupted the ceremony and the king wrote back to them immediately and said there was no need for that and in fact he commended them and thanked them for carrying on the ceremony and doing their duty. So yeah, it's a little piece of um, Tower of London history. This, anyone that's watched my page will know I've been here a good few times. So, and anything that interests me or I love, I just try and find out as much as I can about. Uh, in Victorian times, the chapel was in such a bad state of repair. Queen Victoria attended a service in the chapel and was disgusted to see how bad it was and nearly fell over apparently on the floor because it was so unlevel and she gave immediate orders for the chapel to be restored and repaired which it was and when they started to lift the floor they found the remains of 1700 skeletons under the floor of the chapel and they're all now in I think it's two or three great big lead chests in the crypt and there are also burials out here as well. Because don't forget, it wasn't just prisoners that were buried here. If Yeoman Wardour and his family were working and living here, they died here. This was their parish church. This is where they were christened, they were married, and where they were buried. Um, yeah. Please do not stand on this tomb or use it as seating. Okay. It's sad that they have to remind people about things like that, but there we are. There's another tomb. That writing's well worn away. Um, this place looked very, very different in Victorian times. Then the Duke of Wellington came along, a military man of no nonsense, and made some very, very big changes. A lot of the buildings were taken away. The Royal Menagerie was, was gone. And that was part of the founding of London Zoo. But unfortunately, a lot of the animals ended up going to travelling circuses and things like that. And yeah, Queen Victoria was not a happy lady when she came here. I think it was in 1876, it was in the 1870s, and saw how bad the chapel was. And she released royal funds and gave the order that it must be repaired immediately. We're standing here at the high altar, and I've never ever been out to film in here before, ever, inside the chapel. Where we stood inside there is the high altar, and you've got Anne Boleyn, Catherine Howard, and Jane Grey, who were buried under those fancy tiles with the coats of arms on them. You've also got Jane Grey's husband, Lord Guilford Dudley, uh, Anne Boleyn's brother, George Boleyn, George Boleyn's wife, Jane Rochford. She helped Catherine Howard uh, move her, get her lovers into um, the privy, basically. Yeah, yeah. Jane Rochford helped sneak. I think it was Thomas Wyatt and uh, Thomas Culpepper or something like that. It was one of the it was one of the Wyatts or the Culpeppers sneaked into Catherine Howard's privy to um, yeah engage in carnal copulae. So yeah, the king when he found out was was pretty pissed off, and Henry VIII was not a person that he pissed off and got away with it. So none of these people got away with it. Um, when they discovered. Anne Boleyn's body, she was buried in an arrow chest and the contemporary accounts of the time did say that. It was expected right up until the last minute that Henry VIII would change his mind and give a reprieve, he didn't. So a coffin hadn't been got ready. So Anne Boleyn was bunged into an arrow chest with her head. Um, then when Catherine Howard was executed, Anne Boleyn was basically innocent and everyone knew it, including Henry VIII, so she was accorded some modicum of dignity. Some. Not much, but some. Catherine Howard, when they discovered the place where she should have been, there were no bones, just the remnants of lime and, and a few pieces. And it is believed that Henry VIII hated her so much for what she'd done to him, because she, she basically shamed him, uh, made him a cuckold, and he didn't do that to Henry VIII. And that he believe, that it is believed that he possibly may have given orders that her body was to be buried in lime so it would be destroyed. And that was the ultimate punishment for someone in those days, in the religious era, where you, they believed your body needed to be intact or your bones needed to be intact, so you could rise for Judgment Day. They, uh, yeah, they had a pretty big punishment for Catherine Howard. But the spot where her uh, body is was, is there, and it is known. So, yeah. There we are, ladies and gentlemen. That, my friends, is the Chapel of St. Peter Advincula. And I hope that you've all enjoyed that one as much as I did because it's the first time ever I've ever been able to film in there. Ever. There was only one water about. I don't know if they've lifted the band. Some people were taking pictures covertly. 
um, I just got the camera out and did. So there we are. Take care all. I really hope you enjoyed this one. If you did, please give it a like and a share. And be respectful, of course. Um, I know I was a bit annoyed with filming it. I shouldn't have done it, probably. But I do try to be as respectful as I can. And it is history. Uh, if you do it in a respectful way, I think maybe... Hopefully they'll forgive me if I get a big spat of bad luck. I know I've pee-peed someone off inside the chapel. A paranormal kind, if you know what I mean. Take care, everyone. <laughs> I'm only joking. Um, thank you all for watching. If you did enjoy it, give it a like and a share. Thanks very much.